abomasal abom bloat is where the abomasum, that what's called, I like to call it the baby stomach for simplicity, is where the abomasum blows up with gas so much so that eventually it impinges on the heart and lungs. The lamb can't breathe. There's so much pressure inside that abdomen that blood can't pump around the body. And without having that gas released, they're going to start open mouth breathing and they will die absolutely very quickly. So your question about, I suppose, you know, what causes it? Yeah. Well, traditionally, it's been pretty poorly understood, which you're probably, everyone's probably very well aware of. There's a lot of conflicting info out there, which has really lent itself to a lot of old wives tales about cause and treatment. But the short answer for what causes it is, is bacteria in a nutshell. So traditionally, we've thought of it as sort of an infection, you know, an overgrowth of gas producing bacteria. But the exact bacteria we don't know. And the reason for this is that a lot of those bacteria live there anyway in the healthy animal. So the fact that we see them there after an animal has died doesn't necessarily mean they were the cause, if that makes sense. Mm. So we do now know that it's probably more complicated than just one bacteria. We can have bloat, uh, abomasal bloat from an overgrowth of bacteria that produce gas. Absolutely. Just like we always thought. So a lot of gas produced too quickly and the stomach blows up, game over. We can also find a bacteria that inflames the stomach and stops it from being able to empty. And the same thing occurs in humans with this bacteria as well. So probably just a normal amount of gas produced, but because the stomach isn't emptying as quickly as it should, that gas builds up. And then the third one we see is we also see deaths from a bacteria that produce toxins. And a lot of people probably, a lot of your viewers will know the, the term clostridial bacteria. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so there are clostridial bacteria which kill in quite a different way. They usually look like almost sort of a mild or a moderate bloat, but they never get really big. And we call these toxic clostridial bloats where instead of a sudden gas blow up after a feed, they kind of smolder away over a few days. The lamb gets really dull and lethargic and eventually it's the toxins in the bloodstream that kill the lamb. Yeah, so the short answer is bacteria, but we do have a number of bacteria Probably the reality is they're working together in some way. And of course, there's all those factors behind it that, you know, how, why are those bacteria in the first place? And that's really the big question, isn't it? Mm, gee. Mm. So, so, is, yeah, so yeah. this, the clostridial. No, short, no short answers. No for short today. answer. Yeah, no, 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 that's, that's good. And, and that's kind of, I suppose, if, if, if we're wanting to sort of dispel some of these myths, that's exactly what we need. Mm. So is that, with the clostridial one then, is that why they, again, again, I don't know if this is an old wives tale or not, but. Is that why they, the suggestion is if you've got a bottle fed lamb, vaccinate really early, much earlier than you would vaccinate a clostridial vaccination, that is, much earlier than you'd vaccinate a, a lamb on its, on its mum? Yeah, absolutely. And with it, and I usually recommend a different one as well. Oh. So when we're talking about vaccinations, we're usually thinking, okay, to get the best immune response out of this vaccination, we want to keep it sort of. Um, as specific as possible, you know, so a lot of people will still be reaching for their five and one, six and ones, which is absolutely fine if they're being reared by mum, you know, that's, that's absolutely no worries. Yeah. Um, with your bottle reared lambs, because we're looking at those clostridial ones, so, you know, if you're actually out there in the market for a vaccination, look for one that covers all of your strains of clostridium perfringens, so A as well, clostridium perfringens strain A, um, Sordalii, yeah, and thankfully those big tenon ones, the one we have in New Zealand, you can actually vaccinate from two weeks old. So if someone's bottle rearing a baby, yeah, I absolutely get them to vaccinate at two weeks old, and of course their booster. Yes, with that really broad spectrum. Yeah, so you're right. That's that's absolutely why. Yeah, and that that broad spectrum vaccination is is that would you find that from your produce store? Or would that be from a, a vet clinic?